Welcome to notes 4.3 to 5. These notes are about triangle congruence. And in Delhi Day, you should have learned all the different ways that prove triangles congruent and the ways that don't. So we're going to rehash those a little bit today. Our first method of proving triangles congruent is side, side, side congruence postulate. And in side, side, side congruence, we have if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So we need to write a congruent statement. And we've got um, triangle ABC here. And it is congruent to triangle. And we need to make sure that we are doing our corresponding parts. So I think this is an R. If A to B to C, then we go R to S to T, so triangle R, S, T. Remember, the order that these are in matter because it means that angle A corresponds to angle R and so on. And this is my congruence statement. And if I were to be doing this in a proof, this would be my statement and then my reason would be side, side, side congruence. I'm not going to make you write postulate, and I'm not going to make you write it all out, but you do need to write side, side, side congruence, because later on we're going to start talking similarity. So I need you to write the congruence marking. All right, moving on to our next way of proving triangles congruent. Oh, nope, we're not. We're going to do a proof first. All right, so triangle congruency proofs are probably the easiest of all the proofs you're going to do. What you first have to do is look at what you're given. So we are given that AB is congruent to CB, and that is marked on here. Sometimes I like to mark it myself just to make sure that I recognize that that's what's going on. And then I know that D is the midpoint of AC. Well, what does it mean for something to be a midpoint? It divides it into two congruent parts, which means I've got this going on. So that is congruent to that. And then this, these two triangles each share side BD. So I like to mark that side congruent to itself, basically. And you can see from my diagram that we have side, side, side congruence going on. So oftentimes, I like to make a little note up here off to the side, hey, that's what I'm going to prove. And so now I'm going to go ahead and prove side, side, side congruence. AB is congruent to CB. That was my given. And that is my first side. So I like to write that down so I know how many sides I have left to prove. Well, I have two sides left to prove. D is the midpoint of AC. That was also given. But that doesn't prove, I don't say that some side is congruent to some other side in this statement, so that doesn't give me anything. But I know that because D is the midpoint of AC, I went up here and I marked that AD was congruent to CD. So that is going to be my definition of a midpoint. The reason why I marked this is because D was the midpoint. So that gives me my second side. Then finally, I know that BD is congruent to itself. Well, there's my third side. The reason why anything is congruent to itself is my reflexive property. So this is my reflexive property of segment congruence, because we're talking about segments and we're talking about congruency. And now, I have represented all three of my sides, so now I can say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD by my side, side, side congruence postulate. Right. I think you're starting to see the value now, perhaps, of the reflexive property, which felt kind of stupid before, but now it shows me that I've got my third side, so it's essential, or I can't say that I have side, side, side. So these proofs are very straightforward. Mark the diagram. Find all your pieces, and then write down the postulate or theorem. Okay, moving on to my next one. It is side angle side congruence postulate. So if I've got two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then those two triangles are congruent. This is very important, the included angle, because we also have a postulate or a theorem, actually, that deals with an angle that's not included. So you can clearly see from the diagram – sorry about that. My smart slate ran out of battery for a second. All right. You can clearly see from the diagram here that we have a side congruent to another side, a second side 
congruent to a second side and the angle in between the two sides, also known as my included angle. So this diagram shows a side angle side congruence postulate. So if I have triangle RST, when I write my congruence statement, it's going to be congruent to triangle UVW because those are my corresponding angles. And my reason for that would be side, angle, side, congruence if I were to be writing this in a proof. Speaking of proofs, let's do one. All right, so I am given that JN is congruent to LN. JN is congruent to LN. And I am given that KN is congruent to MN. And that's all I'm given. However, when you see something like this, looks like a bow tie, you know that these two angles are congruent to each other by vertical angles. Okay, so you are always allowed to draw in vertical angles that are congruent, which means what we have going on here is our side angle side congruence postulate. Okay, so JN is congruent to LN, KN is congruent to MN. Make sure when you are writing in these segments, you show them as segments by putting a little bar atop. Don't get lazy. And then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Well, we said that was because vertical angles postulate or vertical angles are congruent. I will accept either one of those. So there's my first side. There's my second side. There is the angle that is in between them. So if I were writing this proof, I would probably write it in order side, angle, side. But it's not a big deal. And finally, that means that our triangles are congruent by the side, angle, side, congruence postulate. Pretty straightforward. An angle side angle congruence. And so if I have two angles and the included side, again that word included, of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So I have an angle congruent to an angle. I have a second angle congruent to a second angle. And then I have this side in between them, which would be the included side which means that's what I have going on here, angle, side, angle. So I would write that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. That's my statement, and my reason would be angle, side, angle, congruence when I do it in a proof. And here's a proof. Now, these proofs are going to be slightly different because you're going to be given some different kinds of information. So we're given that WU is parallel to YV, and that's marked, right? That's my marking for parallel. And then we're given that the other pair of sides here are parallel. And then we are given that this side is congruent to this side. Well, whenever you see parallel lines, you should be looking for congruent angles because that's what parallel lines give you. Now, let's talk about this set of parallel lines. If those are my parallel lines, then this guy right here is my transversal, which means that I am talking about this angle and this angle. Those two angles will be congruent by corresponding angles. And likewise, if I'm dealing with, uh, let's call it purple, this set of parallel lines, the green line is still my transversal, but now I'm talking about these two angles right here. So now that I've marked up my diagram, you can see that I have angle, side, angle. So let's go ahead and do that. We are given that WU is parallel to YV. So we're talking about our purple set of lines, which means that this angle right here is congruent to that angle right there, and that would be my corresponding angles postulate. Now, we have to write it like this, though. If parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So the parallel lines cut by a transversal theorems and postulates do not go away. All right, so if parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. We're also given this parallel, which means we can now state, again, if parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. All right, so there's my angle, there's my angle, and here comes my side. My side was given to me, which means we've now proved angle, side, angle, congruence. All right, so key takeaway from this, 
parallel lines give you congruent angles. Okay, moving on to hypotenuse leg congruence theorem. So this one says that the hypotenuse and leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So I have right triangles going on here, because that's the first thing you have to show, that you are dealing with right triangles. And I have a leg of one is congruent to the leg of the other, and I've got the hypotenuse of one is congruent to the hypotenuse of the other, so I have hypotenuse leg going on. Which means that when I write my congruence statement, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And my reason for that would be HL congruence. All right, so let's write this proof. So we are given that AC is congruent to EC, and then we're given that these guys are perpendicular to each other, which means I have a right angle going on here. And then the last thing I'm given is that AC is a bisector of BD, which means it cuts it into two congruent parts. So clearly I have hypotenuse leg going on here. All right, AC is congruent to EC. That was given to me. And then these two perpendiculars were given to me as well. And you can see that clearly over here someone has helpfully marked that the AC is congruent to EC gives me my hypotenuse. Now, before you can use hypotenuse leg as your reason, you have to show that the triangle is a right triangle. So we're going to go ahead and do this. So angle B and angle D, I marked that, are right angles. The reason for that is that's my definition of perpendicular lines, that they form right angles. If those are right angles, that means that these two triangles are right triangles. And that is my definition of a right triangle. The definition of a right triangle is that it contains one right angle. You will always see these two statements in a hypotenuse leg proof. You need to, when you're writing these proofs yourself, and you will, you need to include these two statements in any proof that you plan on using hypotenuse leg for. All right, and then finally, AC is a bisector of BD. That was also given to me, which means that BC is congruent to DC. As I marked up there, that is my definition of a segment bisector, and that gets me my leg. So now I know that my two triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg congruence. So, in hypotenuse leg, you not only have to prove hypotenuse and leg, you also have to prove that you have right triangles. Those are the three pieces of that proof. Okay, let's talk our final way of proving triangles congruent, and that would be angle-angle side congruence theorem. And that means we have two angles and the non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the corresponding non-included side of a second triangle. It can't be a different non-included side. It has to be a corresponding non-included side. Then the two triangles are congruent. So first angle, first angle. Second angle, second angle. Side not between those two, but corresponding. Right? So it couldn't be this side and this side because that wouldn't make these two triangles congruent. All right, so my congruent statement in this case would be triangle ABC. Oops, ABC is congruent to triangle uh, DEF, and my reason would be angle, angle, side, congruence. All right, let's write a proof. So we are given that BE is congruent to BC, and we are given that angle A is congruent to angle D, and then we have our old friend the bow tie, which means that this angle is congruent to itself. So let's write a proof now that we know what we are dealing with is two angles and the side not between them, angle, angle, side. So BE is congruent to BC, and angle A is congruent to angle D. I'm just going to write those both together because they are both my givens, and I don't have a lot of room down here. So that gets me my side, that gets me one of my angles, and I need to do my other angle. Now, be very careful here. Do not write angle B is congruent to angle B, because there are two angle Bs. So we need to say that angle A, B, E 
is congruent to. Here's the other place where you need to be careful. You need to write this next angle in the correct order. Don't write CBD because C does not correspond to A. You need to write D, B, C. Angle D, B, C. And my reason for that is vertical angles postulate or vertical angles are congruent. All right, so there's my second angle. I now have proved enough. I proved angle, I proved angle, I proved side to go ahead and make my congruency statement. Triangle ABE is congruent to triangle DBC. And my reason for that is angle, angle, side congruence. I just want to point out that this one is in alphabetical order. This one is not in alphabetical order. So you cannot depend on alphabetical order to tell you what your congruence statement is. There's a lot of kind of practice problems in this section. And I'm going to do some for you. And then some I'm going to ask you to answer as part of the notes check. So here we go. All right. We need to prove that triangle DEF is congruent to QRT. And they've given us the postulate they want us to use. So in this first one, they want us to use um, the angle-angle side congruence theorem. And we know that angle D is congruent to angle Q. And we know that angle F is congruent to angle T. So if we're going to use angle-angle side, that means we need to pick a side that is not between the two angles, which means that I can either pick EF is congruent to RT or I can pick DE is congruent to QR, but since I already marked this first one, let's go ahead with my first choice. EF is congruent to RT. What I could not pick was DF and QT. All right, so that's in general how it's going to work. Let's get rid of the markings. Okay, so now I need to use angle side angle, and I've got angle E is congruent to angle R, and I've got RT is congruent to EF, and I need to use angle side angle, which means that the only possible choice for uh, the angle that I need to use is this one right here, because my side has to be between my two angles. It has to be included. So I've got angle F is congruent to angle T. All right. So I would like you to do number three and give me the answer in the notes check. Okay, moving on to some more examples. Is it possible to prove these triangles congruent? If so, why? All right, so we've got triangle TNS and triangle UHS. So I'm given two angles. The only other information I know is that these angles are congruent, right? Which gives me angle, angle, angle. But since angle, angle, angle is not a way of proving triangles congruent, then no, we cannot prove our triangles congruent. AAA is bad. All right, so now I've got these two triangles. Let me see. We've got this angle. They share this side. And then I'm told that these lines are parallel. So here's the tricky thing. When you have parallel lines, you need to be very careful about what you pick what angles you pick. So here's my parallel lines. Uh, the line that connects both of them is my transversal. So this guy is my transversal, which means that I do have alternate interior angles, and these are them. So this one and this one. Which means what I have going on here is angle, side, angle. So yes, I can prove these congruent by angle side angle congruence. So that gives me a yes. All right. I would like you guys to answer number six for me in the notes check. Hey, right, we need to find out if we have enough information to prove these two triangles congruent. And this says SAS, but I'm willing to entertain other guesses. So let's see what we got going on here. All right, we have uh, two triangles. They've got this side is congruent to this side. This angle is congruent to this angle. The only other thing we know is that it shares this side. So what I have going on here is 
side, side, and the angle knot in between them. So I have SSA. SSA is a no-go, right? No bad words in triangle congruency. Moving on to our next pair of triangles, um, I have this side and this side. I have this angle and this angle, and this side and this side, which means I do, in fact, have SAS congruency going on here. Are you sensing a trend yet? Because guess what? This is the one I want you to answer in the notes check. All right, can we prove these two triangles congruent? A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, we have sides, we got the angle, and then we have the sides, so yes. Yes, these guys are congruent by side, angle, side, congruence. All right, looking at this next pair, well, I've got right triangles going on, and they share this, and then these are congruent. So right triangles, the very first thing I should think is, do I have hypotenuse leg? And sure enough, these are the hypotenuses, hypotenai. I don't know what the plural is. Anyway, each of them has a hypotenuse that is congruent to the other hypotenuse, their legs are congruent. They are right triangles, which means that, yes, they are congruent by hypotenuse leg. All right. I am going to let you prove number 12 congruent or not in the notes check. In fact, I'm kind of bored now, so I'm going to let you do 13, 14, and 15 in the notes check. You know what doesn't bore me? Proofs. I like proofs. Proofs. So let's go ahead and see if we can do this proof. Now, here's what I want to happen. I want you to do the proof first by hitting pause and answering all the questions, and then come back and check and see if you got your answers right. So hit pause now. All right, so if you marked up your diagram based on the givens and the other piece of information that you were allowed to write, which is the vertical angles, then you should know that you have side angle side congruence going on. So you write down your givens which means that AB is congruent to EB, or you could have said BA is congruent to BE, but they must be in that order. That's our definition of a midpoint. Again, we have another given, which means DB is congruent to CB, or BD is congruent to BC, but that's it. Those are the only possible um, accepted values. Again, definition of midpoint, and this means angle. I don't know, sometimes the computer writes it weird. So we've got these two angles are congruent. That is my vertical angles postulate, or vertical angles are congruent is also acceptable, which means that we have triangle congruency by side angle side congruence. Did you get it right? Do you understand why you didn't if you didn't? If you answered no to both of those questions, please see me in class. All right, here's a proof you need to write completely on your own. So let's see how good you are at this point. I want you to go ahead and complete this proof, hit pause, and come back when you are finished. Okay, did you get it? If you still don't know what you're doing, let's give you a little hint. So we've got these guys marked. We know Z is the midpoint, so we can mark this. And then they share this side, which means we should be proving side, side, side congruence. That's your hint. If you did not complete the proof, I want you to hit pause now and complete the proof based on that information. Okay, if you're still having a little bit of trouble, here's my next hint. Go ahead and copy down this left-hand side, and I want you to complete the right-hand side, and hit pause and come back once you have answers. All right, and this is what you should have gotten for your proof. If you have questions about that, please be sure to ask in class. This concludes notes 4.35. Uh, please be sure to go ahead and do the note check. Thanks.